Hey, hey, everybody. Monkey Puzzle here, and welcome to this is episode 14, but you're going to see another episode right after this where I also call it episode 14 because I recorded that before this, and I was going to release that midweek, but there's actually some really special stuff that b Fun and I and Aaron B. have been planning, uh, and I can't tell you what it is. Um, you're going to see it this weekend. So a lot of this week, the episodes that would have normally gone up, I'm actually holding back. <laughs> it's a surprise. And I can't tell you why it's a surprise, because it is a surprise. So there. <laughs> so that's one reason. And the other thing is I just redid my computer, too, which I'm going to talk about again in the next episode, which I recorded before this one. But just in short... To go along with the new 1080 Ti graphics card that I added, I also added a, a new motherboard and a processor. So I have moved up to the Ryzen 7 1800X processor, which is pretty cool. I can run almost almost epic settings. I'm actually in high right now because I was overbuilding in B-Fun's base, and <laughs> he's got so much stuff in there. And plus our special project, I had to be, even with this beefy new computer, I had to be in high um, and not epic in order to get a decent FPS. But right now I'm getting over 60 FPS in high, so I'm not recording it yet because that's another thing to configure. I had to reformat my whole computer I, from scratch. I started put Windows 10 on it, which I loathe, <laughs> but I did it anyway. And then all the drivers and all the software and get everything all set up and all the little problems that came from that and everything. So I think I am underway again, bigger, better, bolder than ever. Um, with my gear anyway with the computer who knows about me personally <laughs> should be good so you'll notice the quality and the stability and uh, when I haven't just uh, recorded over at B-Fun's place I'll be pushing it more towards epic settings as well anyway I'm going to talk about it a little in the next episode but I improved my little first base here a little bit and as you can see using the extra arc and structures plus stuff that's available to me to get more storage and better front doors and all that stuff but i'm not going to reiterate that too much and what i didn't talk about too much in the next episode before this is i got some new tames too like check it out i've got this dino which actually needs a name i didn't give it one yet but it was a 145 it is definitely a beast um it's very cool protection got some muscle and i don't know i didn't show you this one actually so now i've got a matching set that was a 145 as well mate boosted high level carnos i like doing little patrols with them and thanks to aaron b i got totally set up i showed you that before with the anki and the dodi around here somewhere there it is oops get your tail away from me and then I also went out and got myself a 150 beaver miter, like as in miter saw. Got to be something wood cutting related for the name there. So that one's already got a name, but you'll see lots of other things around here that need names, like that Carno, like that Rex, like the Anki, and like the Doty. So if you want to name something, please feel free to suggest them in the comments. So. Going to do a big exploration episode with that big surprise coming up and everything. But today I'm just doing a quickie to get something out to you guys and let you know my status and where I'm at. Because you're not all like subscribed to me and on Twitter. Um, I would recommend that if you want to follow my little updates and stuff like that. Um, Twitter's an uh, easy way for me to communicate and get messages out to people. I'm at MonkPuzz, M-O-N-K-P-U-Z-Z. So anyway, I got the full set of utility dinos, and that has made a lot of things possible as far as really upping my ability to gain materials. Um, oh yeah, I fenced this whole place off and put a gate on it. Uh, that's pretty cool. I'll talk about that too <laughs> in the next episode. And I'm doing this thing where I've got a little space down there where I am basically building test builds the little things that i can move and set up as forts elsewhere on the map so 
you'll see that coming into play really soon. So uh, let's do a few things. Let me just gather my notes and I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, so last episode that you saw, we went ahead and tried to conquer the jungle dungeon. And we did all right with that, except as we suspected might be the case, we did not explore the whole thing at all. So Jackson Lawrence, Jackson Lawrence and some other folks told us that there was some little hidden passageways that we missed, um, obviously, and there's a lot more to it. So we're going to go back there soon and do that. Um, and I'm going to wait till I'm level 80, though, which I'm only level 77 right now because all the loot drops in there required you to be level 80 to open them. And <laughs> it's no fun if I can't open the loot drops. But one thing I wanted to show you is how perfect a Thyla is for around here. Be Fun and I had a great time the other day just running around on Thylas because there's all this vertical stuff that you can't climb normally. But with a Thyla, I'm still getting trying to get good at it. With a Thyla though, you can get up most stuff if you don't have uh, birds getting in your way trying to attack you, not letting you up. Yeah, this whole area where <laughs> I want to make my new base. Oh no! They also don't take much fall damage. <laughs> oh, let me deal with this guy. I'm still kind of a noob doing the climbing with the thylas, but we were practicing a lot. We were doing a whole parkour around here with these guys. Hopefully I'm not going to find out that this is a really high level Argentavis that I didn't want to kill. Nah, it's fine. Argentavis, Argentavis, Argentavis. I think it's Argentavis if you're actually speaking it like you're from Argentina, at least close to it. Yeah, so this way is where I wanted to make my new base. And I don't know if I'm going to go all the way out there on the Thyla because there's a number of things I want to show you. And if I... To save time, I just brought you over here to where I'm going to build this base right here over these waterfalls, right over there. But you can see how this is just a playground for thylacolios because you can just get all over the place. Can I do that? Stick to the side. Yeah, I'm still practicing on these guys. But yeah, this is just a giant parkour course for them. Indeed. So... If you're going to live in this area at all, I def definitely recommend getting one of these guys. Because they are perfect for it. Anyway, for expediency, I'm going to go back and grab an Argentavis. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you a few things. We're going to look around a little bit. Do a little bit of exploring um, for where I actually want to build my, my like ultimate base base. <laughs> a lot of these, I don't know which one I'm actually going to really live in. But I do want to set up a few outposts everywhere. And we're kind of going for the whole outpost theme on this map. Oh boy. Hello, guys. And gals. Alrighty. I'm the Argentavis. So one of the things I'm going to do next, actually, is I'm going to take an Anki. I'm going to breed a second Anki, and I'm going to take it over to that cave where we tamed that first Carno, that secret cave that was full of metal and obsidian and such and gonna set up some forges in there and use a, that as a place to really um, produce some metal and such and uh, I forget if there was crystal in there too but just really gearing up for some stuff but right now I'm gonna take you to a couple community builds real quick and just show you some of the things that folks have been building on the map since since I showed you last actually and you can just see how some of these places have been put to use. So I'll meet you over there. So over here in this little uh, valley, gorge, crevice, <laughs> whatever you call it, that has the vertebrae bridge in it that I showed you last time, right next to Viking Bay where we had some adventures 
And actually, that was our very last episode, not the Jungle Dungeon one, but whatever. You can see that somebody has moved in. And we've got some gates right here, which we actually had a little issue with because they block uh, travelers from coming through here. So they've actually unlocked them so that anybody coming through can have free passage. But I believe Lady Sicilian has built this little... Uh, she's inhabited this cave base that I showed you very recently that's in here. They've got a very nice staircase coming up. I think that's really well done. And then I probably am not going to be able to get in because... Oh, it is open. Because I'm not in the same tribe. But check it out. I showed you this empty not very long ago. And now it is inhabited. So got a nice little base here. This is actually my first time seen it just waited for some irl sirens to pass um but it doesn't look like they've made it into that room yet probably saving the spawns with the metal and the crystal so just they it's probably why they have the base parked up front but yeah that's pretty nice foundations blending in with the floor of the cave and all of that so there you go there's an example of a before and after of one of these caves that are obviously made to be inhabited um, being used. And the same person, Lady Sicilian, also has built a base over here in front of the jungle cave. Let me see, get my bearings on where that is. I think it's right over here, yeah. So before I already showed you the very cute little house that Joanna built down here. I'm very fond of. I think that's a really nice, uh, modest use of the setting. But then up here on top of the waterfall that then up here leads into that jungle dungeon, Lady Sicilian has built this modern house complex. Which is very cool too. It's very good looking. I like the blend of the wood and the stone and then the metal roofs to create that modern house look. And then there's like some little adjunct buildings over here, a little stable or something. So that's very cool. Very nice looking. I probably wouldn't have built in front of a dungeon like this because I think areas like this should be saved as little um, staging areas for folks that want to use the jungle dungeon because um, that's a feature for everybody um, but that issue aside you can see that these are some cool structures indeed so some very nice architecture and there's another one i want to show you down here so it's a little further down the map past my watchtower so i'm going to take you down there I'll show you what that looks like. I want to keep showing off the community builds and other builds by the uh, iron miners as well as they come up because just to show you some of the ways that you could potentially use this place. Uh, someone joined the other day and they're asking if all the real estate had been taken up and there somebody else was replying like, oh my god, there's a perfect base spot, you know, like every hundred yards, like everywhere you look, there's a great place to build. And that's one of the awesome things about this map too. So love showing you guys the example of how people have used that so anyway let me get down here and i'll show you another really nice example so right here on the map on sort of the bottom southern bottom of the northwest peninsula when b fun and i were romping all around on our thylas the other day we ran into this little spot here which i hadn't really noticed before it's a really sweet little area very lush um, with this, these yummy waterfalls and stuff and actually stuff has been added since the last time I was here uh, a lot of color and the flowers and everything but a person named Rimtus and forgive me if I didn't pronounce that correctly Rimtus, Rimtus um, has built something I think that really matches the scenery here like to you know you move on to these really nice spots but you don't want your structure to really ruin the place um, so I think this is a really good example of building stuff that really works 
uh, with the environment and actually kind of enhances it. This is a real like beautiful little fantasy place at this point. I mean, these structures are not too elaborate, but you can see they've got different levels going on. I think that's really cool. It's uh, pretty neat how we're getting a lot of good builders here. Oh, and you got the one-way glass going on on here, so there must be a really nice view from the inside. I can't get in because, well, actually I could. We did try uh, rim test the other day, so but uh, I'm not going to barge into uh, his or her place. But I just wanted to show you that because I just think this is a really lovely spot on the map and just a lovely example of using it in just, like I said, a nice, modest, harmonious way. Um, so there is that. So one more thing I want to show you to end this off um, or to a place I want to go to that we've already been. But I want to talk about it a little bit and show you one more cool feature that I have found. So I'll see you over there. And for the last little bit in this episode, I took you back to here. This is the place where the beaver dams are and those epic waterfalls are there and there. Right before you get to the hot springs and the volcanic area over here. It's kind of the bridge between the finished areas of the map and the unfinished areas. You got sort of the line of the finished right here and then across there. I guess the line is more over in that gorge right there where the bridge is where I got slaughtered that time. But all the new stuff is going to come in the whole southern area that way. But over here, this is just really epic. I feel like I'm in Yosemite or something when I'm here. And you can see Beefun has made a nice little outpost right here. Uh, it's just like a little hostel for folks to spend the night on their journeys or whatever. He's got a little dodie here for uh, harvesting rock. And just a nice little place with a pick of mastics and a, an eternal flame. I wonder what's causing that. Um, anyway, yeah, and this nice balcony. It's such a simple place. On such an epic view, it makes a simple place into a very epic place, indeed. So, he set a nice example there. Just a little outpost. This mountain here has a whole ramp that you can climb all the way up. And most of them have that, but not completely. There's a high place over there, and I'm not sure if you can make it all the way up with the dino. There's a high place over there. I'm really looking out around here for where I'd like to make a base that would be like my ultimate place because I just really like it here. <laughs> Aaron is setting up over there just opposite from the castle. And in an upcoming episode as well, we want to see if we can storm that castle and see what's in there. It's protected by bats and other beasties. So we'll see if we can pull that off. So that will be coming up sometime soon, maybe it's in the middle of next week sometime. But down here, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you that I missed last time. When we came through here before, and let me just get past these a little bit so we can turn around and take a look at them. I showed you that in there, there was a little area that you can go back in. Let's just take a quick peek in there as a reminder what that looked like. I think I could do this with my bird without dismounting. Yep. Down in here, there's a nice little area. Nothing too grand, but still pretty cool. Definitely a behind the waterfall cave. And what we missed because we were on land mounts and I got tipped off to it later was by one of my commenters was that in here there is actually something else and i guess you could come right around there on a land dino but we missed it is there is a gigantic cave in here you can see it's got water and flat spots and crystal uh, it's really lovely, and it's also very bright in here. It's not a dark cave at all. And then there's a second entrance or exit right here. 
So check that out. That is pretty neat. I love that. So I'm actually really tempted to set up in there. I'm considering it. The uh, thing that's discouraging me is I, I don't usually set up in caves. I like to have a house with a view. So I'm trying to figure out where that could be. Maybe up there so I could be looking this way all the time. Maybe up here. Although I couldn't see the waterfalls from there, but I could see a lot of this other area. Maybe I'll convince Bifan to let me move next to him up here. I'm not sure, but I mainly just wanted to show you that little cave. So anyway, this was just a little quickie episode here because the one I thought I was going to give you, like I said, I'm saving as a surprise for this weekend. So look forward to that. There's going to be a few episodes in a row that feature what we're working on. Put a bunch of work into it and prior to that put a bunch of work into getting basically this brand new computer set up um, so it's got some of the old parts but it's got a lot of new parts at this point new processor new graphics card new motherboard new memory um, and new uh, m.2 ssd and so on and so forth but that's not in here that's out there but it helps me be in here so with that Thank you for watching until the end of this one, and I will see you in the very next one. Thank you very much. This is Monkey Puzzle. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.